definitely don't need to, I mean, I don't think it'll count against you because it's just, it's several things they look at for the I-944. It's not just one thing. So I think you'll be good. Okay. Does that answer your question? Okay. So yes, kind of, but I'm, I'm still, I, I don't know. I don't want to make mistakes when I send in my application okay. because what I have is I'm just changing, I'm doing a change of status mm -hmm. from B2 to F1. Okay. So, like I said, I did the uh, the testing when I came in in August, and um, I know this is not going to count because I read the the, the policy, the latest policy about COVID nineteen testing. However, um, I just have I wanted to file online, but there is a point where it's asking me when I put the, my evidence and everything. They ask me to include um, an evidence showing that I I sign of not not to receive something I can remember. So that I don't have. So, but if I'm filing it um, uh, with uh, as a paperwork, hard, hard copy, there is no, there is no space for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm just kind of skeptical if I should include that or just leave it out. Well, it's probably something I think I have to look at because I'm not a hundred percent sure what kind of document this is, but if it's definitely a direct question and the answer is yes, I think you should include whatever document goes with that. But um, yeah, you just need to reach out to me after the call probably so we can talk in detail. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next question so that we can um, keep it moving. And if anybody else has a question they feel like asking verbally, you can raise your hand or just type it in and then we'll get to that um, later on, All right? Thank you. All right, so the next question I saw, I've seen this a couple of times, so I just um, put it together, is a question about the Nigerian travel ban, uh, because several people are wondering, you know, what's the quickest way to bring my spouse? I'm in Nigeria, or, you know, just I just recently got married, or I do, I'm going to Nigeria to get married, how do I apply? So uh, the Nigerian travel ban, if, for anyone who does not know, it was implemented, I think, in February of this year to um, prevent certain, to pretty much prevent Nigerians from uh, applying for immigrant visas. Okay, so you can apply for non-immigrant visas like your F-1 visa or your K-1 visa, but any type of visa that would lead to having a green card, like a spousal visa, those visas were banned in February. Okay, so that ban is still on right now because, I mean, still we're still in the Trump administration. We don't know whether it's going to change in the Biden administration. So for people asking the question on the, you know, on Homie's immigration Q&A about the Nigerian travel ban, uh, your answer is that it's still going on. You can't apply for your spouse, but you definitely can apply for your uh, fiance, you can apply for your student visas or your uh, B visitors visa or, or something. So if for whatever reason your spouse uh, comes to the U.S. on a visitors visa, then uh, the, then the spouse can maybe adjust their status here if they meet certain requirements. Because if you had the intent of uh, changing to a green card when you were coming in, that could potentially cause problems in the future. So you have to be sure that maybe um, if your spouse comes and stays for a little bit or whatever, and you decide, okay, I wanna adjust, and then you can do that. But for you to apply for a green card straight from the US to Nigeria and do the interview and all of that process is still banned, okay? Okay, um, does anyone have any questions relating to that? I see you guys in uh, another minute. I'm gonna answer the third question on here because it's a processing question so it's a real easy one the question says how long um does it take to process the ead so i think this person had waited for 30 days i was wondering um how long it'll take to get your ead your ead is your employment authorization card Okay, well, that's what allows you to be able to work in the U.S. Uh, without facing any problems. So generally, the EAD would take um, 90 days. So it just depends. It could be 
uh, six months. It just really depends on your area. And especially now that there's COVID going on, it could really just uh, depend. So at least you have to wait 90 days at least before you can start like worrying about uh, how long it'll take. So in this case, this person had only waited for 30 days. So I would advise you to just wait a little bit longer and uh, you'll get your EAD. And if it's not coming, you can always call the USAIS to check. If you need someone to help you make that contact, I help people uh, check their case status and do things like that. So you can reach out and we can do that, all right? What's your question? Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, my my case is a little bit uh complicated because uh I got denied that was like a year ago okay. and uh around March my husband died. Okay, what uh, did you apply for? What'd you apply Sorry? for? What'd you apply for? The change of start green card. Okay, okay. Start, so. okay. Based on your husband yeah. that, that yeah. died. So I got the yeah, so, okay. yeah, he filed for me. Okay. So we've been married for, we've been married for uh, three years. Uh, going to, oh, let me see, next year, March, we'll be four years. Okay. So we, so he died during uh, this pandemic and all that. So. Uh, yes. Okay. So I don't realize the immigration sent me, uh, they, 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 they already put me for, uh, they took me to court already. Okay, so you had so, a notice yeah. to appear. So for yeah, so uh, right now I don't know what to do. Uh, uh, you know because uh, I didn't appeal be because my husband was so sick at that point. Right. So I was waiting for some time to. Okay, they appealed to me past and all that. So okay, maybe we. He said we're gonna reapply because I wanted to take him back to Nigeria. He was so sick. Okay. So but he died here and all that. Okay. So immigration already put me for proceedings. Okay. So right now I don't know what to do. Okay. I don't know what to do. I'm so confused. Definitely. I have, I have a court hearing on January 11th. Okay. Definitely. So definitely something we need to talk about privately because um, definitely you have different options available for you, but um, I'll need to see the reason why you got denied at first and then uh, see the NTA and then see what yeah. we can do about all that. So. I'm going to leave my contact information in the chat so you can reach out to me and then we can uh, go further about this. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for your question. I will move thank on you. to your question. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, so my question is, I have a, a permanent resident card. Okay. So I'm a permanent resident. Okay. But, uh, my spouse is not, so I was thinking, is it okay to fight for her now, or should I just wait to get my citizenship? Because I just fight for my citizenship already, and uh, they said it's uh, about eight months to complete. So I'm hoping by in June, I should be getting my citizenship. So should I fight for her now why I'm a resident or should I wait until I get the citizenship? Okay, definitely a great question, Ezekiel. I definitely uh, hear this question all the time because people are worried about the time that it takes to wait for the I-130 to get approved and then you file the I-45 and all of that. So that's why they want to wait to become a citizen. But uh, generally, a permanent resident, a green card holder can file for their spouse. So you don't have to wait to become a U.S. citizen, even though you already applied. The only thing that would happen is once your application gets approved for your citizenship, you can change the um, category in which your spouse is going to be applying. So you can go ahead and get started on the I-130 and uh, do that part. And once that gets approved, or even these days, if you check the uh, bulletin and see that your visa is currently available, you can even file everything together or write immediately after. So just definitely get in touch with me after this call to uh, help you with that process, or at least just have a consultation to know what you need to do, at least the steps, because you can start now. The earlier, the better for you to start, because rules change all the time and we just don't know what's going to happen 2021 so just get in line uh, that's the purpose of filing early okay okay and another question i want to ask is uh because if we do the filing and then they will ask for uh, 
uh, income for support okay. or otherwise we're going to need a sponsorship. So I was thinking, would they accept if we do combined income? I mean, where, uh, where does your spouse uh, work? My spouse works here in the United States, oh. though she doesn't have a, a green card. If she can only work for one employer, because she has a H1B, H2B, uh, okay. uh, H1B yeah. visa. Okay. So, so she can only work for one employer. So I was thinking, is it allowed if I use my income and her income together? Definitely, or? yeah. Uh, joining, okay. there's always the room for joint sponsor, adding household members to your income. So if your spouse is working legally, you can definitely uh, include your spouse's income to your application. So you definitely need to speak with a lawyer so you can know what the income requirements are because I don't know if you have any dependents or how that's going to come into play and whether it's going to uh, be enough. So let's talk again after the call. So I'm going to move on to the next question so that we can uh, get this going. All right. Okay. Answer one more question from my list and then we'll go ahead and answer yours. Sound good? All right. Thank you. Uh, so the next question I'm going to answer for my list is, uh, do children need to file a separate DS-160 for their visa? Uh, for an F2 visa. So I'm guessing this is an F1 applicant, F1 being the student non-immigrant visa, which Nigerians can definitely apply for, uh, even though there's still the Nigerian travel ban. But so this is an F2 or an F1 parent trying to apply for her children. So she's asking, can um, or do my children need to file separate application forms? And the simple answer here is yes. Uh, for every immigration process that you file, if you have beneficiaries or anyone else you're adding to your application, they need their own separate forms. Even though on your I-45, for example, uh, they would ask you, do you have children or how many children do you have or whatever, and you would have to put their names. You, if you're actually applying for that child or spouse or anybody else, you have to you know, get their own form separately and pay the separate fee for that child uh, for the i-45 the fees uh depend on the age of the child so you have to check that out and make sure because the fees definitely very important to send correct fees because if you don't forms will get rejected and that's delays and all of that so yes for this particular case for a dependent child of an f1 student you definitely need your own DS-160 form, all right? Uh, what is your question today? I think he's muted. He's mute. Okay. Well. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. All right. Um, here's my place of a... Uh, I missed my interview for conditional resident. I up my conditional resident only January and out of the country with my Okay. I missed the interview. I came back. I got um, a remover, a remover later from the USC. Okay. So I applied immediately for motion to reopen. Mm hmm. And it's been, it's been up to seven to eight months I've not heard from them. So I'm thinking, I don't know what the best do if I should reapply for the um, for the condition, removal of the conditional resident or just wait for the results of the application that I've made. Okay. Um, have you tried to contact the USCIS, first of all, since you've been waiting for uh, the motion to reopen? Hello? Have you tried to contact the USCIS at all uh, since you've been waiting, like since there's been a delay? Yeah, I've tried to contact them, but I can't get, I can't, I've not been able to get through to, with them. 
each time I contact them, they straight they send me straight to the um to the automated system. So I can't drop any question, and there's nothing I can do. Okay. For the past for the past four months now. Okay. Well, I think first the first thing we should do is to get together and try to make a contact with USCIS to see what's going on with that because. With the USIS, you don't want to keep filing things on top of each other. You have to figure out what's going on with what you already filed for. And if you receive an NTA, we have to also talk about that. Like when, you know, when is that? What do we need to do about that? So, because um, those things matter. So definitely reach out to me after this so we can go over what the reasons, I mean, to see whether your motion to reopen that you filed, like what's going on with that, like whether they've approved it or if they're still processing it or whatever. And then we can then have the game plan for the next thing to do. Okay. 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 Yeah, definitely, definitely do that. So I'll move on to the next question. And uh, if you, like I said, like I keep saying, if you have any questions, put it in the comments. If you just raise your hand again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. So, the next question I had on my list was how much is the EAD fee? EAD is coming up a lot. Um, I, I can see why, because it's for your employment and everyone wants to work and get money. So, Definitely a great question to ask. So, uh, first of all, I'll say for your EAD forms, your I-765 uh, form, that uh, form costs $410. You only get to pay for that form if you are uh, applying separately. Maybe for whatever reason, you're just doing your I-765 separately based on some other status. But if you apply together, like if you uh, add your I-765 to your I-485, or any other uh, immigration application that you have, you don't have to pay that fee. So it's rare that I, my clients ever pay for their EAD application because I just always include it with whatever we're applying for so that they can just get approved that way. So to answer that question is 410, but just uh, for the heads up, if you are about to apply, just know that you don't have to pay that fee you can get around it by adding it to another application. Okay. All right. Um, moving on to the next one. Okay. Can I apply for asylum after four years? Asylum is a very interesting area because it's based on uh, people who are suffering from a fear of persecution from their country based on their race or religion or um anything like that. So uh, the rule typically is when you come to the U.S., you need to file for your asylum immediately within the first year. Like as soon as you get in, just be like, all right, I'm scared, can't go back to my country, I want to stay here. So but this person obviously has stayed here for four years and now they want to apply for asylum. So the question is if they can. So yes and no. Uh, yes, if you have a valid reason why you didn't apply after one year. If maybe you were on a student visa, for example, and you just came in and you were going to school and four years have passed and it's time for you to go back and then you realize, oh, there's war in my country or uh, they burned down my family house because my parents are Christians or Muslims or whatever, or something of that nature, then you can be like, okay, I'm not going back. I have to now apply for asylum. So. Yes, if you have been here for four years and you didn't apply and there's a valid reason why you didn't, you can, you're very much welcome to still apply for asylum now. So you would qualify that way, but if there's no other reason other than you're just kind of hanging out in the U.S. and out of status and just, you know, hanging out, and now all of a sudden you remember that there was war or something, or... Let's just say you were hanging out and the war maybe just recently happened. Maybe you decided, okay, fine, I'm leaving the U.S. I'm just out of status and I'm going. Then you wanted to leave and then there was war. Maybe at that time you could, but you really have to justify um, how the war is really directly affecting you as, a, as an individual and how, you know, you can 
qualify for asylum. So I think, hope that answers the question. If you have any follow-up, uh, put it in the chat and we'll go over that. All right. Uh, the next question, I don't see any hands raised, so I'm just going to keep going with the questions. I appreciate all of you guys for being here and just um, being amazing. I don't even have to. So, all right. Uh, the next question, I have been here for two years. I have a girlfriend back home. Uh, what's the quickest way to bring her here? So when I was reading this question, I was like, well, if you've been here for two years, like what is your status? Because you can only bring someone from out of the country if you have your own uh, green card or US citizen, uh, US citizen status. So what is your status? This person didn't really say. So I'm assuming it's just, let's say a US citizen. So if you're a US citizen and you have a girlfriend back home, you can definitely uh, get engaged and apply for a fiance visa. That's one of the quickest ways. Even if you're from Nigeria, you can still do that because fiance visas, um, it's a K-1 visa. So it's a non-immigrant visa that you can still qualify for. So you can do that. But if you're a green card holder, uh, you have to be married to your spouse to be able to file or, you know, bring the spouse over. So, but the thing is, if you're from Nigeria, you're a green card holder, unfortunately, you can't do a K-1. So you have to, the only thing available for you is the marriage. So if you're not from Nigeria or any other country under the ban, because Nigeria is actually not the only country. There are several other countries. I made a video about it uh, all the way in February. So... Uh, but I'll post the link to my YouTube and everything so you can check that out. Uh, but so if you're from any of those countries with a, a ban, you, you have to see like what's available to you. So this, this question is kind of vague, but it, it just depends on what your status is. U.S. citizen, you can file a fiance visa or a marriage visa if you're not in a country that's banned. If you're a green card holder, you can only file a, a, you can only file a marriage visa, not a K-1 visa, because K-1 visas are only available to U.S. citizens, all right? Okay, uh, next question. Okay, you can ask your question. Hi, um, yeah, thanks for taking the time to do this. Hi, but I'm going to apologize first. I don't know if you already answered the question prior because I had to leave for a second. Um, but I want to apply for OPT. Okay. So I guess my question is if I have my I-140 pending, is that, is it, is it a problem when you apply for OPT? Since the I-140 has to do with changing your status from F1 to like a green card. Is it, is it a problem to do that? Well, that's something we'll probably have to discuss outside of this call. Cause, um, when it comes to student visas and OPTs, there are several rules that, are just really unique and specific that we'll have to check. But generally, I, I wouldn't think that it'll interfere because you're still on your student visa right now, right? You're still F1. You're just applying to change your status, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so if that's yes, the case... Yes, that's correct. Sure. So if that's the case, I, I would uh, assume that you'd be able to go ahead and apply for your OPT and just do your... I-140, because they're separate um, entities anyway, so, and I don't think it'll it'll interact, but whatever the case, if it's not going to work highest, they will just uh, reject your application, and that will just be that, and then you focus on the I-140 and, and wait to get your uh, work permit and all of that through that route, okay? Okay, thank you so much. You are welcome. All right. And if you need any further clarification, you can always uh, reach out to me. My information will be in the chat by the end of this uh, whole thing. And you can let me know if you have any further questions. All right. Um, thank you, first of all, for doing this. Because You're welcome. It's, you're really helping out. You're welcome. So um, my question is just, um, I'm just a little bit um, curious because I found my um change of status for resident residency. Okay. But I found like I found it to get Hello? I'm not sure. Oh yeah. Okay. Can you all hear me now? Yes. 
unfortunately we had a little glitch. I don't know what happened and I lost everyone, but now we're back and I don't see any of the chats anymore. So if we didn't get to your question, uh, please, you have to type it again and hopefully we can get to it before any of that happens. So, okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so let's continue with your question. And yeah, so I said, um, so I applied for um, change of status um, res um, for resident permit, right? Okay. But I applied together with like um, employment status and everything. So I, I applied everything at once. Okay. So my question is, um, first of all, is that a good idea? And it, although I got like a receipt from them mm -hmm. and them telling me not to send any of the documents until I'm required to, um, because I didn't send my medical um, document to mm -hmm. them. So they just told me um, I shouldn't send anything until I'm, I'm required to. But now it's been like three months. I've not gotten anything for biography or, or whatever. So I'm just like really curious. Uh, is everything okay? Or should I be like, okay, should I call to check or what? I don't know. Well, um, definitely a thing to worry about if it's been taking forever for your case. So the first thing I always advise is just to call and check. If you have attorneys you're working with, you have to do that status inquiry to see what's going on. And it's always a great thing to wait to send any information, uh, wait to be asked. Because if you send your medical uh, without being asked, it's just going to get lost. Uh, besides, you can even take your medical to your interview. So I don't think it's something you really need to worry about too much. So if you can't, um, if you, you know, if you haven't heard from them, it's just your medical that you need to send in. Just wait till you get the notice for your interview. I mean, sometimes not hearing from the USAIS could be a good thing. That means they're just going to send you your interview uh, letter as opposed to like a request for evidence.